A few weeks ago, I posted a video where I tested how AppSheet performs with various Google Sheets database sizes. And after that video, a few of you asked for a speed comparison of Google Sheets versus AppSheet database versus a SQL database. So here's that video. And what we're gonna look at is how each one of those performs compared to the others. I built three separate apps for this, one using Google Sheets, one using AppSheet database, and the third one using Postgres, which is a SQL database. And they all have the exact same tables, same columns, and same number of records, so we're really comparing apples to apples. But before we get to that, one quick housekeeping note. I just released version 2.5 of my AppSheet Advisor Chrome extension, and it now includes citations back to the official AppSheet documentation. So for example, if you ask a question about a specific AppSheet topic and there's AppSheet documentation available about that topic, it will both answer your question in the context of your current conversation and link you directly to the official AppSheet documentation related to that topic. It's very similar to what tools like ChatGPT or Perplexity now do, but it will always link you back to official AppSheet documentation, again, when that's available, versus a random forum post, which, which may or may not be correct. There's also an updated AI expression creator that's now more accurate than the previous one and also now able to edit as well as create new expressions. So if your expression is broken, you can just go in and edit it, ask it to fix it for you, and it'll take care of that. And finally, I've added a cheaper subscription option for those of you who are using AppSheet for personal projects. Be sure to check it out. Here's the link up above, and I'm also including it down below to save you some typing. And if you think that this extension could be helpful for you, or if you just wanna support what I'm doing with this channel, please consider purchasing a subscription. All right, let's take a look at this database performance comparison. This is the database that we're working with for these tests. This is the same database that I used when I did the previous video. It's a sample e-commerce company. There's different tables for items, the actual items that we have in our product catalog, customers, addresses, orders, order items, which is the join table between orders and the items within that order, and correspondence, which is emails related to some of those orders. And we have a total of 101,625 records within this database total across all these tables. And that's just above the sheets maximum recommended size of 100,000 rows, or they say a 10 megabyte compressed maximum. So this is 8.67 megabytes compressed. So again, getting up to the absolute maximum size that you would want to be using with a Sheets database uh, and where you'd be looking to move on to something else to make your app sheet app perform a little bit better. All right, and here's my three different apps, uh, Sheets app, a app sheet DB app, and a Postgres app. Again, all three of these are exactly the same as far as the app structure. The only difference is that they're pointing to those three different database types. So what we're gonna do here is actually run a refresh or a, a sync on this using the sync button up here to see how each one of them performs, again, with this 101,000 records. So I've got a stopwatch on my phone here that I'm gonna use to record the time as we go through these, but I'll also put one down on the screen so you can see as well. All right, so let's start with Sheets, and I'm gonna do a refresh here. Okay, so on my phone, I got 21.71 seconds for that. So again, pu pushing 22 seconds for that refresh. All right, now let's go over to the AppSheet DB one, and we'll try this again. All right, 6.7 seconds on that. Substantially faster than Sheets. Let's try it again. I do get a little bit of variation each time I refresh. I have seen this be faster than that, so let's try it one more time. All right, that time we got 7.83, about the same. Try it one more time. All 
I got 4.96 on that one. So again, a lot faster than we're seeing with Google Sheets. All right, now let's go over to the Postgres database and let's refresh this. All right, about seven seconds so far. Okay, we got 12.16 seconds on that one. And again, let's do uh, another ch test just to see if we get a variance. Right about 10 seconds so far. Twenty one point eight nine. So a lot of variants from the last run. Again, a little bit better than sheets, but not a lot. And one of the things you might be thinking at this point is shouldn't a regular database be performing at least as well or similarly to AppSheet database? And in order to try to make this perform as well as I could, I've done a few things. I first of all put this in the same data center as where our AppSheet application is running from, or at least running from most of the time. I'm located in the US in New York state. And most of the time when I'm hitting uh, my AppSheet app, I see that the, my requests are going to either the US central uh, region of Google Cloud or the US east region, usually US central. So I've hosted this database in US central to try to have as little latency as possible between AppSheet and the database itself. And I've also added timing in for the actual queries that AppSheet is running to see how long it's taking for the database itself to return the information. And I'm seeing uh, millisecond response times for it to actually return the data from the queries that AppSheet's running to get the data. So whatever slowness is happening here seems to be happening on the AppSheet side versus the database side itself. And again, we are seeing much better performance on the AppSheet DB side. And there seems to be some kind of optimization that they're doing there to make that happen that is not happening with uh, the SQL database that we see here. So with the SQL database, there still are a lot of optimizations that you can make, mainly by reducing the amount of data that you're actually feeding into AppSheet at a given time just to speed up its actual responsiveness. I not going to get into that in this video, but I will create a separate video specifically for that. And that's something else I've been experimenting with as I've been doing this testing as well. All right, now that we've seen that AppSheet DB is substantially faster when you're looking at these 100,000 plus row database sizes, let's take a look at some of the times that you might want to consider using it. So if you're creating a new app, I would always recommend starting with Sheets because First of all, you don't really need the optimal performance. It's going to, AppSheet's going to perform just fine with a small number of records using Google Sheets. And second is that you, the licensing requirement to have an enterprise license for AppSheet database kicks in at 2,500 rows, which means if you're using this for any kind of business app that's collecting any significant amount of data, you're going to very quickly hit that 2,500 row limit, which is then going to push you into having to get uh, enterprise licenses or user pass licenses for all of your users. So I always recommend starting with Sheets, building up your app, and once you start to see, you know, the performance really degrade into, you know, 10, 20 plus seconds, then look at actually moving on to something else or looking to optimize at that point. But once you get to that point, some things to consider about switching to AppSheet DB are, First of all, your sheet has grown to a size where it's unacceptably slow and you need all the data to be available at one time. So if your database is really getting up to the size where you're again seeing 10 second plus load times and you have the option to offload some of that data to other places in order to speed up the app. For example, if you have you know order history and you can offload previous years of the orders into a separate sheet that isn't actually served in real time by AppSheet, do that in order to be able to improve your performance. But if you're not able to do that, and again, you're seeing this slow performance, you may want to consider AppSheet DB at that point.
The second is that you plan to stay under 200,000 rows for the foreseeable future. So we're going to look at this in, the, in a minute with the trade-off slide. But AppSheet DB currently has a limit of 200,000 rows, and there's not really an option to go anywhere else from there. So if you're if you're at 100,000, if you're at 150,000, you want to again be able to stay within that 200,000 for the foreseeable future, or you're going to have to figure out some other migration path in the very near future, and you might as well just do that right now. And the third is you're okay with the really the expense of having to require enterprise licenses and or user class licenses for each one of your users they're going to be accessing your app because once you start using AppSheet DB over 2500 rows you need to have those enterprise or user pass licenses for every one of your users. And lastly you're okay with the trade-offs and we'll take a look at what those trade-offs are right now. So the AppSheet DB trade-offs, first of all, as I just mentioned, all of your users need to be on uh, enterprise or user pass licenses above 2,500 records. Uh, so there's a cost component to that, obviously. The second is that there are minimal management tools for backup, export, migration, auditing, etc. So even in Google Sheets, you have, <laughs> honestly, a little bit better management tools than you have with AppSheet DB. Uh, and if you have a you are using a SQL database, you certainly have better management tools as well as, you know, if you have DBAs on your team that can help you work with your data and optimize stuff as well, you might have that option with a SQL database. With AppSheet DB, the backup tools are pretty much non-existent. You just have to make a copy of the database in order to back up. The auditing tools are honestly pretty clunky and very slow to work with and not a great user experience at all things like being able to do data transformations that you know dbas or you if you're familiar with sql can do in a sql database there's not options like that it's just a very basic user experience as far as these types of tools all right and then the third is that there's no non-app sheet access to this so with Sheets, there's a API for Google Sheets that you'd be able to access that data with if necessary. With a SQL database, there's just, you know, you can make a database connection to that to access it from other apps for integrations if necessary. But with AppSheet database, there's no direct API for accessing it. So your only option is to go through the AppSheet API in order to be able to get to it. And then the final one is that there's no clear path forward beyond 200,000 rows. So as I mentioned before, that's the limit for AppSheet database. It's really unclear if it's a physical limit. I haven't actually tried and tested to see what happens if you get to that point, but they do call that out in the documentation as specifically the limit. So once you get there, you're gonna need to figure out some kind of other option anyway. So ultimately, the decision on whether or not to use AppSheet Database depends on your scale, such as the number of records that you have, the number of users that you have concurrently accessing your app, as well as the trade-offs that you're willing to accept. If you're in the 100 to 200,000 record range, it's probably the fastest option that you're going to find for AppSheet, but you need to know exactly what you're signing up for. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a like. That does help others find it as well. And if you'd like to see more AppSheet videos, be sure to subscribe. I do post new ones weekly. That's all I've got for today. As always, thanks for watching and happy building.